Hi, Ashley here with hearthookhome.com and today we are going to work up one of my new super chic, super cute, super quick gemstone holders. This is an adjustable pattern that is basically a little net that holds your stone and you can change it out as you wish. Now you can make a longer chain here to use it as a necklace or you can do a shorter one and hang it from your rear view mirror or in your planty area or around your home, etc. I don't necessarily recommend using these for a keychain because with all of the wear and tear that your keys get, I don't want the stone to slip out. So let's learn how to use our gemstone holder first. So you can go ahead and pull the wooden bead up and notice that it's a little bit hard to get that out. You'll lay the little basket down and change out the stone to whatever you want it to be. Let's say we want to use this beauty right here. We'll go ahead and lay that down, pull it up, and then shove this bead back down nice and tight and make sure that it's not going anywhere, that it's not going to pop out. I'm trying to move this around and make sure that it's not going to go anywhere. You can kind of toss it a little bit, bang it around on things just to make sure that it's really secure and not going anywhere. When we make these, we do make one side of the chain a little bit thicker and you can make this as thick as you want to make sure that this bead stays nice and secure on there the whole time, making sure that your beautiful gemstone is not going to go anywhere. So let's get started with our supplies. Of course, you will need yarn in order to make your gemstone holder. Here I have a number three crochet thread called Curio number no. three from We Crochet. Absolutely love this beautiful sheen it's got to it. It is a 100% cotton, which I love. We also could use Comfy Fingering. This is also a cotton, it's actually a cotton blend, but it is a size one fingering weight yarn and it will work nicely. That is what I used for this one here and for this black one here. I used the navy of the Curio number three for this version and this one does feel a bit stronger than these two but I do love them both. I will say that I tried one using embroidery floss for one and I needed less than one skein to make each even a necklace size. I needed just less than one skein of the embroidery floss but with the sheen and you can see how silky this is, it, the stone tends to slip around in there. So be sure if you decide to use embroidery floss that that stone is secure and not going anywhere. If when you are making yours, you notice that your um, it just is a little bit too big, it needs to be a little bit more snug in there, you can substitute the treble crochet stitches that we're doing for double crochet stitches as well. And that will make everything just a little bit smaller. If you want to, you could go down a hook size we are already using the smallest hook size in the dots crochet hook set which is a two millimeter which any smaller than that and you're getting pretty dang tiny so here we have our two millimeter we have a yarn needle that we will need for weaving in our ends we have a stitch marker to mark the beginning of where we start it helps us to get those stitches in there in the right spot and i have an assortment of wooden beads now you will notice that with your wooden beads some of them are going to have larger openings than others like this one here has a much larger opening than this one, right? So I'm going to use the smallest opening that I can find of my chosen bead so that it is nice and tight when we go to secure it down onto our gemstone. So all that being said, we've got our supplies, we've got our hooks, we've got our gemstones ready for a new home. Let's get started. For video purposes, because this Curio number no. three with the tiny two millimeter hook is so hard to see the stitches, I'm going to use a worsted weight cotton instead. We're going to start and leave a little bit of a long tail just for the simple fact that it's easier to weave it in when we're finished. I'm going to start with a slip knot and we are going to do a chain four. Find the first chain that we made and do a slip stitch in that back bar only, just like this. Beautiful. Now you're going to take that stitch marker and you're going to mark the center of that circle right there. You're going to place a stitch marker right in there. And that is where we're going to place the stitches in round one, the rest of round one. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a chain 11 and that is going to count as a treble crochet and a chain seven.
Now we are going to do a treble crochet, chain seven, three times in this circle. So I'm going to do a treble crochet by yarning over twice, go into that marked space, just the circle where you put that stitch marker. I'm gonna go on this side of the knot. Not that it matters, it really doesn't matter. But for uniformity's sake, since I've got to add several of them, I'm gonna put this one on the right side of the knot and complete that treble crochet. And now I'm going to chain seven. Now I'm going to do a treble crochet in the circle right here. And chain seven. Treble crochet in the circle. And chain seven. Now we are going to find the fourth chain from our first one over here. So count up from the bottom, one, two, three, four, this one right here. We're going to join to the fourth chain from our beginning chain. And that is the end of round one. So there's a slip stitch. Let's take a look at what we've got here. If you want to, you can go ahead and weave in the beginning tail, up to you, doesn't matter. You can do it at the end as well. Now we are ready to start round two. This goes quick, we're almost done. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to find the first three chains or the next three chains right here, and we're just going to make a slip stitch in each of those. You don't have to use both loops, you can use the front loop only, which is what I find to be easiest, since it's right there in front, ready to be used. There's our three slip stitches. Now in this next chain here, I'm going to go under both front and back loop and make a single crochet. And now I'm going to chain four and treble crochet, so wrap it twice around the next chain space, which is right here. So we're going to go into this center chain right here. So that is again, going to be the fourth chain. So here's our treble. We're gonna count one, two, three, four. So we're gonna make our treble crochet in that fourth chain there. Beautiful. So that is the first half of our little triangle for the basket. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create our chain. So we need a chain for the left side and we need a chain for the right side. So now we're going to chain all the way, however long you want it to be. For the ones that I made long enough to hang in my rear view mirror, I did 50, um, 50 or 60. And for ones that I made as a necklace, I did either 90 or 100, depending on how long I wanted it to be and the size of stone that I wanted in there. So I'm just gonna do, let's say 50 for this one. I'm going to clip my yarn. Go ahead and pull that on through and pull it tight. And now we are going to do the opposite side so that we have two chains. So you can see that this is where we added that chain four and treble crochet into that one. So we're just going to rotate it so that we're looking at the opposite side. So we've got this triangle pointing towards us now, and now we've got these two chain spaces. So those are the ones that we're going to use to make the second half. Now we're going to pull our yarn quite a bit because we're going to double up the thickness. And I'll show you here in a moment what I mean. But I'm going to pull quite a bit of yarn so that I can have both of the yarn tails around my hook. So first thing is we're going to insert our hook right here. We've got our one, two, three, four. This is the fourth chain, so I'm going to insert my hook right there, and I'm going to pull up a loop. Remember I left a long tail, a very long tail. You can leave it, I mean, up to a yard or two the first one you do so that you kind of have an idea of how long you need to make the future ones. For this portion, you're going to use both ends of that yarn. So we're going to make a chain four and do it a little bit on the tight side, like that. One, two, three, 
four. I'm making them a little bit tighter because I'm doubling up on the yarn. So now I'm going to take away the extra yarn tail. This one here, I'm not gonna use it for this portion. So this is just kind of hanging out down here, right? So this is my working yarn coming off of my yarn ball. Now I'm going to make the treble crochet in the fourth chain over here. So we started here, we're gonna find the fourth one here. So one, two, three, four. Wrap it twice for a treble. Go into this one here. Complete that treble crochet. One, two, and then through all of those loops for the double stranded. Now, we're going to pick up that second yarn again, and this is how we're going to help make sure that one of those chains is nice and thick so that the bead stays nice and secure on there. You want it to be kind of tight to get the bead on there, right? So we're going to pick up both yarns now and do our first chain. We're gonna pull it a little bit tight so that you've got that nice go in there. Okay, so we've got one, or that's two technically, three, four, five, and six. So now we're going to drop that extra yarn again, get it out of the way, use the working yarn only for the remainder, and we're going to chain to the same number that we chained over here. So that was six, so we've got seven, and go ahead and pull that nice and tight, eight, nine, ten, and continue to whatever length you did on the first one. Okay, I'm going to clip my yarn. And fasten off. Pull that nice and tight. Okay, now let's go ahead and weave in our beginning tail first. Remove that stitch marker. And a lot of times when I do um, crochet patterns starting at a circle, I like to use the magic circle to begin. And for this project, I didn't want to do that because I wanted to have the knot for extra security. And also because when I use the magic circle, I like to have a lot of fabric to weave in that end a lot <laughs> going around that circle just to make sure that the tail isn't going to come undone. And with this one, we just don't have very many very much fabric here to work into. So I figured that knot with the chain four instead of the magic circle would be beneficial. So now that I've gotten my yarn woven in here a little bit. Perfect, let's clip that and then we will beef up the chain a little bit more. So now we are done, right? We are completely done. We've got our two chains here, which is what we will use to hang and we'll put the bead on. I've made up a, another version of this so that we can do the bead together with the actual curio yarn. So we'll do that here in a second. But before we do that, I'm going to beef up this chain a little bit more. And you're using the rest of that yarn tail. Like I said, um, you'll learn if you make several of these, you'll learn exactly how much of the yarn you need to leave um, to have enough to weave this in to help beef that chain up a little bit. Beautiful. And so I'm just going to go back and forth in different directions, adding extra thickness to this chain. Perfect. Now, I'm going to clip this yarn and we will add with the curio, we'll add the bead together. Look how cute that is. I love it. All right, so now we have this cute little basket that is ready to hold. We need to insert our bead onto the end here. So what we're going to do is I went in through and I found one of the smallest openings I could find. I'm gonna go ahead and put my hook through there, grab the two ends of my two chains and pull it through the bead carefully. Make it go down the chain and it's already a little bit hard to get on there, which is perfect. I'm going to tie a knot on this end here. And now I'm ready to put a stone in. Which one should we do? Let's do this pretty little red one. I don't know the name of that off the top of my head. So it's nesting down in the basket. We'll take our little bead, we'll push it down, make sure that thick part is really hard to get through, which is perfect. 
So pull all of that and look at that, it's so cute. I love it so much. Now you're gonna wanna make sure to kind of force it around a little bit to make sure that it's not gonna pop out. So play with it, beat it around a little bit, throw it, you know, do whatever you're gonna do. Make sure that it's super sturdy and depending on where you're gonna wear it or put it, um, you may need to, like I said, go down to double crochets instead of treble crochets if it's just still a little bit too big. But isn't that beautiful? I love it so much. I hope you love this pattern and that you'll make a million of them and that you'll share your pictures with me by tagging hearthookhome.com or hearthookhome across all social media. Thanks for watching.